Hi, this is Tom Dumont from No Doubt, and you're on BackstageAccess.com, where the real show begins. Backstage Access, we're here at NAMM 2013 with the one and only Tom Dumont and No Doubt. Tom, how you doing? Good, how are you? All good. And uh, Tom just got done doing a presentation for G J2 Guitars, brand new guitars. Tom, tell us about the beautiful guitars. Well, so um, I met Grover. I mentioned it, but I'll, I'll mention it again. I met Grover about a year and a half ago mm -hmm. and found out he was starting up a new company. Right. Uh, In case anybody doesn't know out there, Grover Jackson major player in guitar innovation. Randy Rhodes should come to name, Jeff Beck, two of the main players that uh, Grover's worked with over the years, and now Tom, obviously, another major player. Yeah, I'm, you know, I, I guess I'm a collaborator of sorts with okay. Grover, and this is, I mean, one of the, the things about, the thing about Grover is, besides being a great guitar builder, mm -hmm. um, and besides having great stories about guys like Eddie Van Halen right. and, and yeah. everybody he's worked on. with over the years, um, the guys were also known for collaborating with artists. He, he um, custom built guitars for for Randy Rhodes, which is maybe his most right. famous guitars. Right. But I, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, the first uh, Van Halen guitars you see on their album covers, and he, they played in those days. Those were right. Grover's creations or, or collaborations as well. And so, you know, I'm not in a league with those guys, but I'm really honored to get to collaborate with. With Grover, and really, what he wanted to do is build me a guitar that uh, that was great for me to play right. on stage with the band. And with no doubt, I, I'm not a soloist. I'm not a Van Halen. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm a great, let's say, rhythm player, and I'm great at uh, being a, a band member and supporting our vocalist. Mm -hmm. um, you fit so, the band very well. So my yeah, so my uh, guitar needs are different, but the the consistent thing is that for me, I'm out there on the road with the band. Um, doing show after show after show, and I need the guitars to to um, to feel great, to play great, and also in a way to to kind of disappear on stage. The Grover always tells me that, about this. The guitar should disappear in the sense that as I'm playing the songs, you know, and I'm playing a 20-song set, um, I don't want to I don't want the guitar going out of tune. Right. I don't want there to be problems with the knobs. I don't want to be tripping over the placement of the pickup selector. Mm. I don't want I don't want to have problems on stage. I don't want to have to worry about the guitar not doing its job. Right. I want to worry about making that song sound the best I can, and and really executing the nuance of the, of the song. And um, so so we started designing a, a model together, and we've made three prototypes, uh, which I've been road testing for the last six months on TV shows uh, and concerts with no doubt. We took the guitars to Europe. Um, and and we uh, we fixed things and adjusted things that I would find from playing gigs. It's one thing to play guitar sitting down in a guitar right. shop, yeah. But man, get a guitar and stand up a, at a setting. two or three right. hour rehearsal and in an arena setting, yeah. and you find new problems to fix to solve. Mm. And so that was the idea here. And um, I, you know, Grover's known for the super strats. It's what he's done so mm. well. My taste runs towards this kind of a look, okay? So the Zora is that collaboration. And so uh, Grover's built a guitar that, um, you know, first of all, obviously looks incredible. It's it's handmade, and Grover's involved um, in overseeing the make of every guitar. It's basically a custom shop, you know? Um, and in so, Southern California, in by Southern the way. In Southern California. Yeah. Where, and Grover makes the knobs, and he makes the pickup covers, and he makes the pickups. He's got a whole line of pickups. Okay. Um, he, you know, does all the inlays. He does. I mean, it, some of the detail on this guitar are incredible. But part of my aesthetic was to make take this Les Paul vibe and make it feel better to play standing up. You know what I mean? Right, right. Um, it, one of the things is I wanted the guitar to look great from the front, but I love I love wood. All right, and. To, the, the, I love hand-oiled wood, unfinished wood, where the wood can breathe, mm. and so the backs of these are all are all un, basically unfinished. It's I was just, say not even lacquered at all. There's, there's no lacquer yeah. at all, 
and what happens is the next faster. When you get on stage and that lacquer gets sticky on sweaty hands, it's, it, you know, it's a little like thing that slows you down. And not that I'm ripping on stage, right. but it just feels better to have that smooth service. And over the years, um, on guitars I've played with unfinished necks, um, they just naturally get smoother and smoother. So we wanted to showcase the beauty of the wood. I mean, a big part of guitar making is not just the precision, but it's the choice of the, and the quality of the wood. And so we wanted to highlight that. Um, you know, I love the inlay work. I don't think I've seen anybody do this kind of an inlay where the whole headstock front is inlaid. Uh, I don't know if you can see that in ebony. That. Um, it's, you know. If you want to show it over, over the, there. The precision to the work is really incredible. Um, and the necks have the compound radius fretboard, so they're fast. And again, I'm not a ripper, but when I'm at home playing by myself, you, you know, I can go as fast as I want. Right. As fast as I can, which isn't the fastest, but the necks are fast and really easy to play. So anyway, I'm thrilled uh, to work with Grover and, um, and to have custom-made guitars and to finally see this thing come to market as a production model. With uh, you can see his other models. This is the Zora. This is the Arate. Um, this is the Concord, and this is the new Glendora. And so, this is a set neck. These are neck through. These are bolt-ons. Um, and again, everything everything uh, made in Grover's shop, except for the tuners and the bridge. Um, and that that one has uh, the old style knobs, but these knobs are all made there. Okay. All the plates in the back he makes um, so it's awesome he's, he's a he's a, a dude with attention to detail now and I know you said you don't like to worry about the details that's why you're dealing with Grover but um, a detail that maybe the fans out there want to know obviously the names are very out there they're very, very different how did the names come about for the guitars uh, the Glendora and the, and the Zora and um, the the uh, so the arate is the first one. Okay. And it's a it's a Greek word that means excellence, basically. Okay. Um, it's it's uh, starts with the letter A. For this model, they wanted it to start with a Z, and it was okay. really Grover and John from GJ2 who came up with the name Zora. Um, I love it because it sound you know Zora sounds like the name of a beautiful exotic girl. Yeah. And I, you know I think of guitars. <laughs> yeah. Right. There's a lot of analogies. Yeah. In guitars are curvy like you know yeah. girls, and you know. One thing that's great about guitars, when you have a lot of them, they don't get jealous when you play yeah. the other one, right? <laughs> so right. that's the Zora. The, 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 Con the Concord um, is really reminiscent of the shape that he um, collaborated on with Randy Rhodes. Right, right. Everybody knows this yep. guitar. The Glendora is um, a throwback to the original um, Charvel and Jackson factories in okay. Glendora, California. And so this guitar is uh, more similar to those original uh, Charvel models with the, uh, with the maple neck, and, uh, and this is obviously more like the soloist, I guess. Well, we're going to skip right through and actually ask you what's going on with your band, and I know you guys are off tour right now, so what's, yeah. you know, what's well, up for 2013 we, for No Doubt? Well, we put out um, Push and Shove, yeah. our album, uh, last fall. We did a lot of promotion for the album um, on TV and, and in Europe. We did uh, like a seven night stand at the uh, Gibson Amphitheater in LA, right. kind of a little mini tour in town. And we're just gearing up for a summer tour of the United States and okay. Canada this summer, 2013. And uh, 60 shows, I think, okay. is what we're hoping to do. And is this going to be a co-headlining tour? Is it you guys going to be with some it's, other bands? We're or? headlining and I don't, I can't disclose the opening bands yet. Okay. That's what we've been working on. Um, and we're and we're writing some songs in the studio. So we if if we get lucky and write something that we love, there could be a new song or two coming out okay. before the summer tour starts. Okay. So we're just excited for that. So look forward to no doubt on tour this summer with some opening bands. Obviously, they can't disclose. Um, and we thank you, Tom, for taking the time to talk to us with these beautiful guitars and tell us about no doubt. Telling us about no doubt. Mm -hmm.